When you think of dessert, there's one specific ingredient that most of us will agree just shouldn't work. But when it's done right, it's the perfect marriage. What is that ingredient, you ask? Cheese. Now, of course, we've all experienced the beauty that is a cheesecake. But what if I were to tell you that there's an even richer, even more cultural, and even more historical dessert that will have your guests rubbing their bellies all the way home? Kanafa is an ancient dessert with many variations, with these variations originating in Palestine, Egypt, and other Middle Eastern countries. And nowadays, you'll often find it in most Middle Eastern as well as Turkish establishments. Kanafa is a dessert that mixes crunchy, savory pastry with a cheesy inside and drenched in a flavored syrup for the ultimate balance of flavor. So for this episode, we're going kanafa crazy. Most people shy away from making kanafa because of how complicated it looks. But I'm going to show you two very simple ways that anyone can make this in their kitchen. But before we do that, let's go and see what we're up against from the kanafa pros themselves and get the public's opinion on this Middle Eastern favorite. So before we try and actually make a kanafa, we need to see what makes a really good one. So we've come to the heart of where good kanafa can be found, which is Harringay. And we're going to go and have a look at some of the kanafa restaurants and see what we can find, see what we need to look out for, ask people what they think makes the best kanafa. So after figuring out how to pronounce the name, Antep Lila, we are outside this legendary place to see how kanafa is made in the kanafa section of their restaurant. Special cheese. You do uh, it here, not take out. What, what cheese? You make it in here? Yeah, everything oh, wow. is making here. This is butter. Yeah. Oh, butter. This is butter is making here, not take out. Oh, really? Everything is making here. How is it? Good. <laughs> Wow, man, that was a banging kanafa, not gonna lie. Big up reaction, man. That guy was sick. What a vibe. So now what we're gonna do is go and find some people, see what they think about kanafa. What makes a perfect kanafa for them? But like, what makes a good kanafa for you? The best kanafa for me is when there's a good ratio of kanafa to syrup and a good amount of pistachio as well. For what's those the, who enjoy What's the right pistachio. ratio of syrup to kanafa? Not too much that it sort of uh, drowns the kanafa, but enough that it's soaked it in and sort of uh, melts in your mouth when you eat it. I don't have a lot of kanafa, but what I would say is probably a healthy amount of pistachio and uh, a sufficient amount of syrup. Not too much, not too little. Quite soft, not too crispy. For me, a good kanafa has to be very moist. A lot of otto in it, very syrupy. I don't like it dry at all. And the cheese for me has to shrink. So if it doesn't have cheese, I wouldn't really call it kanafa. I prefer my, my kanafa to have cheese, so yeah. How do you like your kanafa in the morning? In the morning? <laughs> oh, subhanAllah cheesy, crispy, and with more on the less side of the syrup. Do you like salty cheese or like without salt? No, no, no. It's rather like texture, you know? Yeah. Make it flow. All right, so we're in Damascate today, uh, which has a bunch of different ingredients that we can use to make kanafa. It's in Shepherd's Bush. And the main ingredient that we're going to start with today is the cheese. There's loads of different options of cheese that you can choose from. And it can be a bit confusing about which one to go for. What we're going to use today is some akawi cheese some ricotta cheese and mozzarella. So these are two different options that we're going to use. So whichever one you can get your hands on, I'm going to show you two different ways of making it. This one is a bit more authentic, but this one's a bit of a kind of, you'll figure it out kind of substitute kind of way. So we'll start with that. We have now, as you can see, the katafi. It will always be in the freezer section, sometimes in the fridge. Now, very important, very unhealthy, but very important. We're going to use uh, some ghee. I'm not going to say how much, just because there's a lot that goes into it. So we use ghee on the side. We have the frozen katafi pastry. We have our ghee. We have most of our cheese. Food coloring, pistachio for the top, cardamom for the syrup, sugar and water we've got at home. I don't think we're going to buy water from here. Yeah, that's it. We've got the cashier. He didn't want to be filmed. He, he said the only photo he takes is for passports. But he threw me in an extra cheese roll. But for that, I thank him. Whoever this man is, may your day be amazing. Mm. <laughs> it's taking us longer to find parking for mozzarella than it did for like every other ingredient on this place. Let's go get some mozzarella. Let's go. Cheese. Let's go. Would you like your receipt? Yes. Please take your receipt. Okay. Okay. 
Let's make some kanafa. We're gonna start by shelling a bunch of pistachios, which is a bit of a lengthy process, but trust me, it's one of those things that it's just worth it in the end. These are all roasted, and they're gonna look a bit brown and sort of reddish on the outside. We want a really nice green pistachio, so what we're gonna do, shell them, pop them into a bowl, pour some boiling water over it, and this will loosen the skins for later when we peel them. So let's fast forward through this. <laughs> so we've peeled the pistachios, finally, after like a 10 minute segue. And we're going to take some boiled water, literally just from the kettle, it's fine. Cover them in boiling water and we're going to leave them on the side until they're cooled down. So let's move on to our pastry. Um, it's called uh, katafi or katai. So we have our shredded filo, a kanafi pastry, which is like an angel hair kind of pastry. Quite accessible, you can get it from any, you know, most, most supermarkets in the freezer section, as you saw. And we are going to chop this up. Now there's two types of kanafa. You have the one made with this angel hair pastry, and then you have the more traditional one, which is the uh, nablus kanafa. Not as common though, because it's very difficult to make. You gotta kind of make a crumb, only like really specialist bakers can make it. So this is a much easier version to replicate at home. And what we're going to do is chop this up. So first I'm gonna go length ways. Make sure you've got a sharp knife, or you can put in a food processor, much easier. But I'm just going to show you guys that don't have one. Just use a knife, it's absolutely fine. And I'm just going to chop this up like this. Then I'm just going to split this up into two, makes it a bit easier. And we're going to shred this into fine pieces. However fine or large you want it to be, it's absolutely fine. You can even keep it like this. Some uh, recipes keep it long, but I don't really like the texture. I think it's nicer when you chop it up. So we're just going to chop it up into small pieces. Cool, so that's all our kanafa nice and chopped up. We're going to chuck this into a bowl, just like that. It feels so weird, you know what it feels like? It feels like actual hair sometimes when you're holding it. So just chuck that into a bowl. And separately, I've melted some ghee. All measurements will be in the description, mainly because I eyeball everything when I make kanafa, so I'll have to go back and like figure out what the measurements actually are. And we're going to take our melted ghee, and we have here some orange food coloring powder. You can use gel if you want, that's absolutely fine. I prefer the powder personally, don't know why, but I just think it's nicer. It's up to you, whatever you prefer. And I'm just gonna put like half a teaspoon's worth into this ghee, maybe a bit less than half a teaspoon, uh, just to give it a nice orange color all the way through. You don't have to use orange food coloring, you can just let the natural kind of caramelization happen in the oven. But I think putting a bit of food coloring through it is quite nice. It just gives it like a nice orangey kind of hue, makes it look a bit more appetizing. That's just gonna get poured in there. It seems like a lot. That's it, I have nothing else to say. It just is a lot. Um, so we're just gonna mix this all up together by using our hands and you wanna really sort of like rub it between your fingers until it's completely coated through. You're just making sure that each individual piece is coated with fat. Cool, that's done. Slide that over there. Get this over here. Because we've used a fair amount of ghee in the pastry, we don't actually need too much in our dish. Now the reason I've got two dishes is because after this step, when it comes to the cheese, when it comes to the cooking, there's a couple different ways that you can make it. So I'm gonna show you a more sort of close to the traditional method of making it, and then a Yusuf slash made halal way of doing it, which is a lot simpler if you're trying to make it at home. So we have these two dishes. I borrowed these of my in-laws, but to be honest, you can use a pizza dish. I'm going to take some tissue, take maybe a nice dollop of softened ghee, maybe like half a tablespoon or a heaped teaspoon will do the trick. Um, what I'm gonna do is put, again, half a teaspoon orange food coloring powder. You're literally just gonna grease it, mix it in with that food coloring. I'm just going to spread it out like so. Let's just get that pastry in. So what I'm gonna do is make sure the bottom of your tray is clean and you can actually just use it to press into the other one. It will just really help with that mold, making the shape better. Also, you don't want like a huge fat kanafa. Kanafa is not meant to be like a, a sponge cake or something like that. It's meant to be nice and thin and crispy. You should enjoy it like piece by piece rather than having to, you know, go have a full meal around it. If you don't have a separate tray like we're using here, you can absolutely just use a glass. I just use a glass at home if I'm making it. Um, it works absolutely fine. So let's just put these underneath here for now. Okay, let's talk about cheese. Now, there's two different approaches that you can do. Technically, none of these cheeses are correct. The authentic uh, cheese that is used in Kanafa is Nabulsi cheese, which is, I believe, like a kind of uh, cheese made from goat's milk, which kind of forms curds that really gives it this extinct taste and allows it to be really stretchy. Unfortunately, it's quite hard because it's a regional cheese and, and it's kind of homemade. It's hard to find here. So if you're looking in a supermarket, you have two options. If you have 
access to a local kind of Arab store, you can use Akawi cheese. However, if you don't have access to that, you just kind of have supermarkets and maybe local Asian stores and stuff like that around you. You can use a mixture of mozzarella and sort of crumbly ricotta or any kind of soft, flavorless, milky kind of cheese, you know? So long as it isn't like a stretchy kind of melting cheese that it's quite crumbly, the mixture of these two together will give a nice curd-like taste, curd-like texture, should I say. So let's start with the Akawi. We can kind of see. It literally says on here, Mediterranean melting cheese. So if you want a more authentic kind of vibe to it, we can use that. It's fairly hard. It looks a bit like tofu, to be honest. Let me put that in there. We can just use a knife or your hands, to be honest, and just sort of shred this up into little pieces. And so we have this akawi, roughly chopped or crumbled, however you want to do it. And this is just going to be sprinkled onto the pastry and ready to go. Uh, so I'm going to put this to one side. Okay, so we've done the akawi cheese and now we are moving on to our alternative. So if you don't have access to akawi cheese, you can absolutely make this. This is what I more commonly sort of do at home because it's a lot easier to get your hands on. Mozzarella. Now you can just use mozzarella. The issue is that if you were to just use this, it'd just be way too stretchy. It would not be that pleasant to eat. So what we're gonna do to mix it up and make it more curd-like is mix it together with some of this crumbly ricotta. Now you can get this in so many different places. You know, it's really quite like crumbly. It's very milky and, and it's got like almost no flavor. Now, now the way I like to do it is I like to go for maybe one heaped tablespoon of this cheese per ball of mozzarella. And what I'm gonna do is just mix this up with my hand, really just get in there, make some interesting noises um, and just squelch it all together. Well, I think that's enough of that. So what we're gonna do is we have our two trays. I'm going to take the akawi and just lightly sort of sprinkle it all over so that it gets nice and melted all the way through. Just sprinkle this around. Cool. We're just going to kind of leave a slight border so that it doesn't like bleed over the edges and stuff like that. You can definitely put this cheese in a food processor. Because I've cut it quite thinly, it should still melt and be nice and, and gooey. But you can absolutely put this in a cheese, pro in a, in a cheese processor, in a food processor, uh, and it will work just fine. So we have that as one. And then as a second one, so we're going to put the mozzarella and ricotta kind of mix onto this one. I like a lot, so we're just going to really pack that in, get it everywhere. Really just leave a little border around the edge as well, just so that it doesn't become like, you know, kind of melt through and stuff like that. This is actually my preferred way of making it because I think it's just super easy and um, you can kind of get like a standard result across the board. Like it'll always kind of come out the same way. Well, the other one I've left it open for this particular one, what I'm gonna do is take the remainder of the kanafa pastry and just whack it on top. So we kind of slightly somewhat close this thing up. I like to just put a bit more pastry on top because it gets nice and crispy and just works nicely. When you flip it over, you get crunch on both sides. So I quite like that. So I just put a bit more pastry on top. So the Yusuf slash made halal kind of version of the kanafa, the easier one which you can make at home. This is going straight into the oven. It's gonna become nice and crispy on all sides and you don't really have to keep an eye on it. You can kind of just have a look. If I shake it now, it's stuck. Once it's fully cooked, you'll be able to shake it. It will be crunchy on top and it's just a really easy way to know when it's ready. So this is gonna go in the oven about 20 minutes, I'd say should be enough, uh, at about 180, 190 degrees. Okay, next thing that we're gonna do is take our pistachios that have been sitting in boiling water and we're gonna peel them. Once you've peeled off the outer layer, it will go from looking something like this, which is a bit brown, to a really nice green pistachio. And this is what you really want. You can do it by hand and it will take a bit of time. But what you can also do is rub it between two pieces of tissue and just rub the skins off, which is what we're also going to do. Okay, so we're gonna take these pistachios, just give it a good rub in this tissue and they're all coming out. And they should all come out and you should start to see that little pieces will be free from that husk and you can just put them to one side and pick them out like so. Okay, so now that all the pistachios have been peeled, they're looking nice and green and vibrant. We're just gonna start chopping these up. You can use a pestle and mortar if you want, but I think chopping up is also very simple and quick. You can keep them as rough or as fine as you want. So again, we're just gonna have to cut forward until this is all done. These pistachios are really taking up a long time. Just buy them pre-done, man, oh my gosh. Next up in a pan, I've got some sugar. I'm gonna put equal amount of water with it. So one cup of water to one cup of sugar would work. We are just going to add in our cardamom to that. So I'm gonna use about like six pods. You can use less, you can use more. You don't have to, you can use orange blossom water. You can uh, add some rose water, you can add saffron. You can do whatever you want to it really. It's quite a versatile syrup. So I've got six pods here. I'm gonna split them open, pop them in. We have 
our stock syrup uh, with cardamom inside it. This is going to be used to pour over the kanafa and it's going to give it a really nice sweet taste. So we're just gonna put that to one side. Okay, the way we're going to do this actually is by putting it on a medium low heat. So I don't want it to be too, too hot. And we're just going to have one quarter of it on the flame at all times. And we're just going to slowly just turn it. This will make sure that it's nicely evenly cooked. Because if we were to just whack the main thing just on center, you'd have an uneven kind of cooking. So the best thing is to do is to have half of it on the fire and just constantly turn it. This is the best way. It will allow it to really crisp up and cook nicely. You can already hear it sizzling, which is nice. So what we're gonna do now is take our two types of kanapa and we're gonna flip them over. This is the bit that can get messed up because if you don't have the right confidence, it just won't work. Just do it in one fluid motion, okay? Three, two, one, flip, flip. Wow! One. And two, wow. that was the one on the stove. So you can see the difference here. The one that was cooked are in the oven has a much more even kind of cook. It's a sort of more consistent. It's easier, you'd have to stand over it like for a few minutes. Whereas the stove one, it's got a really nice kind of crunchy exterior. But let's pour over our, it's got different names. Qatar, well, Qatar, but you call it Qatar, right? Qatar, but with, they drop the Qaf in Arabic. So it's Qatar is what it's commonly known as. Also the Gulf countries call it Shira. Or if you're British, it's sugar syrup. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna pour over the top. Just like that, let it soak in. If you feel like it's gonna like go everywhere, you can use the back of a ladle and pour it over the ladle. If you don't care like me, just pour it over the top. It smells amazing. I can't smell. Oh no, I can't smell! <laughs> so you have a couple ways of garnishing your kanafa. You could just make a pile in the middle, just like that. Another way, a little bit in the middle. Just... A moment of silence. Bro, that's amazing. Whoa. I'm not even flexing. It's not stopping. Wow. So that wraps up today's video. We have tried kanafa, we've made kanafa. It's just been a very kanafa heavy day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Do let us know what you thought of it, what you'd like to see in the comments below. Send us pictures of your attempts of kanafa at our Instagram at Freshly Grounded, uh, and we'll see you next time.